what's going on guys welcome back to another video so guys as you can see i posted my video on a tier list for fortnite shotguns so i'm here with my brother and we got a list of our favorite youtubers and we're going to be making a tier list and ranking them we put a grouping here of most of youtubers we went through the criteria they have to have a large viewership they have to gain a constant amount of of high views on every video and they have to be YouTubers that we watch. We put Jake Paul in here just for the memes, but basically everyone in here that we watch whenever they post content. So The easiest starting baseline for me is Filthy Frank. Would you agree that he would be a C class? Yeah, I would say Filthy Frank should be an S, but he was when he was posting videos. But now that he doesn't post, like, he's just, there's no, like, yeah, we just put him right in the middle because. I, yeah. uh, I think it works as a C because he's so popular he's still popular he always got a high viewership he's super controversial he always made good fun content and right now he's not making videos so it's a perfect baseline to like set where we're gonna put things after that yeah i agree all right so next let's go with mr beast mr beast is definitely like the one of the biggest things on youtube right now like he's pulling jake paul numbers but with actual good content i would say he should be an a but at the same time, like I feel like his content is kind of repetitive, so I feel like he he we can't put him any lower than a B. So, what do you think? I think yeah, he's got to be a B. Well, I think B for Beast, but the main reason I would say B is I'm not the biggest fan, but I do like have a good time with a lot of his stuff. Uh, it's mostly because, like you said, it gets repetitive, and there's not a lot of quality there. It's mostly just I'm gonna give money away, but sometimes it results in really good videos, and sometimes it results in like really boring things like people just doing stuff for money but b seems like a fair especially when you add up all the criteria yeah it seems like a pretty fair place all right so next let's talk about angry video game nerd cinemassacre a lot of you guys probably don't know who he is a lot of you guys watching this video but he has three million subs and he gets a lot of views on his videos and he makes really good content like it's high quality he does like skits and stuff like that but yeah i would say he's he's at the same for me he's at the same position as mr beast like he's he has really good content. The only problem I have with him is that, like, uh, I just find myself not watching his posts every time he, he posts something. It's just, like, I'll go every once in a while and just, like, go through all of his catalog of videos and watch them. So, uh, I, would, I would say he's he's definitely at the same level as, like, Mr. Beast. He's, like, an OG YouTuber. Yeah. Right? He's definitely a gateway for me. He's the reason I started watching YouTube. Uh, I I really just wanted to watch people play retro games, and that's what he did. But he also tore them apart in a really funny way, and I think the quality was never really there video wise, but the jokes were always there, and it was based on some stuff from my childhood. So I thought it was funny. I think if you've never seen him, you should definitely check him out. But uh, when he's not doing AVGN, which is Angry Video Game Nerd episodes, I feel like his other content is not the greatest and like i don't want to watch the let's plays and what's not so b is a fair place yeah i think so because when he makes the quality it's really good and when the rest of it there's just always content all right next let's talk about philip defranco what do you think i think he he has a lot of content he's constantly posting he's a big name he has a large fan base but at the same time like we talked about it earlier i think that it's mostly just news that you can get anywhere else and it's just fans of his choose to go to him but if you weren't going to him there's a hundred other places you could get the same thing yeah in my opinion it's like drama alert without like without an opinion that's what it, what it is and it's like I, like i only watch philip defranco because of the stories i care about and i stop watching right i don't want to hear him talk about donald trump which he does in every single every day there's always a story about some sort of politics i don't care about so yeah i would say i'm gonna put a I would say he's a, he's around an E tier. I would say realistically he's like a D, but I'm okay. I'm comfortable with you putting him in E. Yeah, okay. I think I can definitely survive that. All right, next let's go with H three H three. So wh where do you think H three H three should go? Um, H three H three is probably one of my top five favorite YouTubers ever. His content is amazing. He's controversial. He doesn't care at all. He has a backbone. He's willing to stand up for, you know, like the free speech yeah, that's, of YouTube. That's why I love H3H3 because he just doesn't give a fuck. And, and the that's, content is there. His th podcast is good. 
Yeah, it is. It's quite, I watch this podcast all the time. It's not the best podcast. I'll, I'll say that it's, 100%. It's got to but... be somewhere in the higher ranking of podcasts. Like... It is. It's good. It's good content. But, like, it's not. Comp- it's nothing compared to, like, Joe Rogan or, you know, even, like, Bobby Lee or, yeah. But it's up there 100%. It's just his content is why is why his his podcast isn't why I would give him an A tier. I'm gonna I wanna give him an A tier and I wouldn't do it because of his podcast. I would do it because of his videos. They're just they're just way better. Like his podcast is like a video stretched out, a lot of dead air. I love it. I still watch yeah, it every, yeah. every it's time. It's a little long. But I agree though. Just the the podcast adds to it because even though he doesn't post videos as frequently as he used to, the podcast is entertaining enough to fill the gaps. Yeah. Especially if you watch on his channel H three podcast highlights, you don't have to watch the whole thing. You could just watch the good clips of the show. That's what I usually do. Yeah, I don't. I only watch his podcast, his main channel, and I used to watch his second channel, but he stopped posting on it. All right, so I, I'm fine with A. I think he deserves an A. He's definitely one of the best YouTubers on the platform. Not scared to say what he thinks, but anyway. Uh, let's go on with John Tron next. John Tron doesn't really post that much content, but when he does, it's something that I want to watch. And I think everyone who's a fan of John Tron waits for those days when he posts a video and, and they're on it right away. Um, but the problem with John Tron is he like takes these weird, like three month breaks and doesn't post like, it's just, it's not consistent. And out of that, the, like he doesn't, he deserves a higher tier if he were, if he was consistent, but because he's not, I don't think I want to put him like he's not he's he has to go yeah. underneath H three H three. I can't put him above H three H three. I think on the same level. content quality level, uh, like the writing on some of it is amazing. Yeah. The biggest issue, like I'm I'm not a fan of people who quit and then come back and quit and then come back and like he has way too many breaks. I agree, but the reason he definitely makes this list on top of us liking him is that every time he goes away, as soon as he comes back, he immediately gets the same amount of views as he got before. Yeah, because his content is really good, yeah. but my whole point is he's not a consistent YouTuber. Uh, right? I highly recommend people watch JonTron because it's funny. I know another like small downside of him that puts him a little bit lower is that a lot of the stuff that he bases his content on is irrelevant. Like you're st- He's still doing videos about the shark tape or whatever it's called. Yeah, you know, like who cares about that? That was yeah, mean, like two years ago. And I think because his his process of writing is so long, he always does that. Like his jokes always like you could tell they're like jokes that would have hit like a month ago, but because it's a little bit later, he's still hilarious, still worth watching. Oh, 100 percent. But I would say B tier. It knocks it down a bit. B tier, hundred percent. A bit of a new YouTuber, Jablinski Games. Uh, I'm a big fan. I love Jack Black already, and it's a weird one because we tried not to put celebrities on the list, but like his content is not really based on him being a celebrity i know he goes to the movies for some of like on his shoots but it's more like just having a fun time like will smith's channel is actually really good i don't know if you've ever seen it i did i just don't like it uh, it's not my type i know but for vlogging it's he's probably the best vlogger my, on youtube my my i know but he's not like i don't know oh, we're not he's jack, not on the list jack black like the way that he edits like the way that someone edits his videos i forget who the editor is it's i know his son helps all with the editing it's just it, it reminds me of youtube it doesn't remind me of like Kevin yeah. Hart's YouTube channel or exactly. Will Smith's YouTube well, channel. Well, Will Smith is definitely better than Kevin Hart, but yeah, I agree. And I think that he captures the idea of what I want to watch. Like it's just entertaining and it's constant content and yeah, the, one, the, the one, viewership is there. The one problem I have with Jack Black is his videos are always short, which is like a good thing, I guess. But there's like there's moments where I'm like, okay, I, I want to watch like a half an hour of this, like of him just messing around, you know what I mean? I agree. And I feel like the reason that his videos are so short is because they try to post a video every Friday, which they do. They missed one Friday so far since he's made his YouTube channel. But um, yeah, so they try to make that one video for Friday. So they, they have like a, a couple of clips every, like, you know, a couple of clips throughout their week. And it just doesn't make a good... A, f- a long video they're entertaining they're not amazing i would give him a c yeah i think he's a good borderline right there like he's not amazing and he's not bad it's just like the perfect youtube to watch on a boring day you know what i mean yeah it's perfect friday night content yeah. you know 100 percent. it's eat watch it with your food kind of content yeah okay so next let's go to jake paul i think we both agree he's just yeah an he's an f yeah. he's got easily the like his content is not terrible, and the quality is not bad, but he's just such a loser. Like, yeah, it's unwatchable to me. He's I can't such watch a loser. It. I've never even tried to watch a Jake Paul video. There's been moments when he's been in, like, drama with people, and I'll try to see, like, his side of the story, like that most recent one with that whole bully well, his thing. His side never makes sense. So. That, with that whole bully thing, I tried to go watch his video, and I'm not going to lie, I lasted, like, a minute and a half before. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go watch, like, PewDiePie talk about it. You know what I mean? Do you know so. what's funny? That's exactly what I did. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. And then I watched the other guy's side, and it, it makes Jake Paul look really bad. But anyways, he's a clear F. 
his brother's not even on this chart. Like, he doesn't even chart. Yeah. All right, uh, next, let's talk about Ian at uh, iDubs. I think iDubs is definitely one of the best YouTubers. Content Cop is, like, one of the piece, the best pieces of content on YouTube. The way he rips somebody apart and doesn't give a fuck is, like, just the best thing about his content. And I feel like there's there's no way to... He's not, he's not on the same level as JonTron and Mr. Beast. Um, he's, he, you know what I mean? He's not an S-tier, I would say that. Like, he should be an S-tier, but I just have this weird feeling that we're never going to see a Content Cop again. And, and therefore, like, that's his best piece of work. Uh, so I'm going to have to say 8th here. You know, if we, if we were to get Content Cops at least once a year... We haven't got one in two years, by the way. If we were to get at least a Content Cop once a year... What that's do you mean? All we I got Gum. That was two years ago. I've, I looked it up. That was two years ago. There's no way it was it, two it was, years don't, ago. It was two years ago. I'm telling you. You can look it up yourself right now on your phone. I'm going to have to say iDubs is an 8th here. Uh, yeah, he's definitely an 8th here. He has... Some of the best stuff. Even his unboxing videos are so funny, but it's just like, I don't really want that. That's not what I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like it's like how we argued about other people. Like, the podcast for h 3 keeps me watching, but it's not what I want from him. And the, the boxing videos keep me watching, the squirrel videos or whatever. But, like, I think he has so much talent, and he's so ruthless. He's easily, like, the, the beginning of, like, the end for those people like Leafy who are out there just destroying people. And then yeah. iDub's job was to come along and destroy the destroyers. And that's what he did. He literally just wrecked people every day. And he's he's just... His quality is so good. But again, that being said, like I don't think we'll ever see a content cop again. Either way, he's, he still knows what to, it takes to make quality stuff. Yeah. It's not like he lost it. But I agree, he, he could have been an S. Yeah. All right, next let's talk about Casey Neistat. We should have probably done this one a lot earlier on the list, but... Because it's just, it's just quickly we're going to run through it. Casey Neistat, good high production value, boring vlogs, um, not consistent poster. I don't know. I don't like Casey Neistat. Uh, I, I really, I just never watch his content. And when I do, it's like, because he's interviewing someone like Mr. Beast. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Beast. Well, he's one of the first people that I started watching on YouTube. And in the beginning, I didn't really know who was good. It kind of just happened. And at the beginning, I kind of liked him. I liked his vlogs. But as I you go through more and more, he, he sort of becomes more of a solo, and I don't hate the guy, I don't have anything against him, but you could tell that he went in a different direction. I kind of like his new stuff where he interviews the other YouTubers, and he asks them actual hard questions, this is what I like, especially with Mr. Beast. He put Mr. Beast on the spot a lot, but Mr. Beast had good answers, but same time, it's not something that I, I'm not a, there to watch vlogs, but I feel like he needs to be on this list because he is like a big YouTuber. Yeah, hundred percent. He's a, he's one of the, the faces of YouTube and the way that we look at YouTube, I think you'll agree with me. It's not about like, like when I watch YouTube Rewind, there's all these YouTubers I don't know about, but Casey nice that is one that I would see in YouTube Rewind and I'm like, yeah, he's, if anyone in this video I'm going to watch, it's going to be him or like Nick A30 or Ninja, right? It's not like all these other people. I don't even know who they are. So Casey Neistat, I think, is one person that's, uh, you know, liked by YouTube that we're going to have to put on this list. And I would say he's a D tier. I would say he's 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 a little bit better than Philip DeFranco, obviously. But, like, there's no way we can we can put him on the same, uh, you know, level as uh, Jack Black and, and uh, Filthy Frank. So, All right, so next let's do Rhett and Link. A lot of people might not know who Rhett and Link are. They basically do a morning show. That they just, it's like 10 minutes long and there's there's two, there's a, there's an episode after it. And they just do a morning show and they talk about like weird things. They do challenges. It's kid friendly, but you could tell they don't want it to be kid friendly. Like it's it's hard to explain really. It's not like, if a lot of you guys are watching this probably know who Nick A30 is. He's child friendly. He wants to be kid friendly. They're not. They're just like adults who don't cuss. So, um, but it's really good content. I love it. I, I've always watched, I watch their, their shows daily they do take big breaks, like, they take, like, two months break sometimes, but when they are posting videos, they're posting two videos a day, and then videos on the weekend, and it's good content. They're funny guys, it's always worth watching. Um, in my eyes, they're an S tier. They're the best that you can get from YouTube, but I don't know what you think. It's not even an argument. If you've never seen Good Mythical Morning, it's probably the number one channel I would tell anybody, go watch. Because anybody can watch it. You could be an adult, you could be an old person you could be uh 
whatever. A teenager. It doesn't matter. Any decent. girl, boy, yeah. anything. Anybody can watch this. It's it's stupid humor. It's, it's stupid, funny, and it's quality. Like they're always on point and they're always relevant because every video is filmed every day. And their humor's consistent. That's what I love about it. They haven't and changed in like seven years. I've been watching them. Yes, they do take breaks, but they do it every year now to the point when you know when the breaks are coming, and it does suck when they're gone, but yeah, you know what's happening, so it's still consistent because yeah. you know that's gonna happen. Yeah, and you know that they're gonna come back. They're they're they gotta be like easily one of the biggest. And like what you said, I a hundred percent agree. They're like family friendly, but they're not. Their goal is not to be family friendly. Like they have a lot of dirty jokes intertwined, but they don't like cuss. Is the thing. Yeah. Like I think right now what happened is in for a while what they wanted to do was they really wanted to be family friendly. And once they're so big now that I don't think anything they do apart from like going accidental PewDiePie nonsense yeah. could knock themselves out of being that. And they're definitely S. It's not even an argument. Yep, we both agree. Yeah. All right, so we have to put Max Mofo on this list because he's one of he's the best Australian YouTuber hands down. Fuck, I love Laser Beam. If you you haven't watched Laser Beam, you should. He's hilarious. He's like Max Mofo, but he posts videos all the time. Um. But yeah, Max Mofo is definitely the best Australian YouTuber. The reason I'm going to have to give him a low ranking is because, like, his, his Pokemon stuff is, like, it's just easy content, man. It's just such lazy content, dude. Opening up a pack of cards and filming it is not hard. There's no edits. There's nothing. The best part of his videos is when he kicks that door open. I'll give him that. But Max Mofo should be an A tier. He should be. But I'm going to have to give him a C tier because his he doesn't post on either of his second channel, his first or his second channel. All he does is post Pokemon pack openings so uh i'm gonna put him at c i mean i'll i'll accept the c i think he's a little bit more towards a b but i can fully accept it i'm a very big collector so i like watching the openings but i agree that they're simple and that's all he's been doing lately because he, i don't know to me he could have been an a if he kept going with his content that like that he was doing with idubs and filthy frank and all that stuff and h3 h3 like or whatever he did. Yeah, but even 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 after that, he was doing stuff on his own on his second channel that was good, and he stopped doing. Oh, that's what I mean. He, like him, he, and, him everything and, he had was good. Him and anything for views. Him and Chad. Well, like they they opened up a uh, switch and they played switch, and it was just funny content. Like why not just do random stuff like that? People will watch it, man. That's what I mean. And so. I, for me, it's okay. I like the openings. I watch it. I think some of the editing he does, the little things are funny. Like when he slows down his voice and stuff like that. But. Because he completely gave up what made him famous, I kind of got to agree with you. Yeah. Okay, I, so we'll say C tier for sure. Okay, so definitely uh, I got to put Shane Dawson here. I mean, I've never been a consistent Shane Dawson fan, but everything he's done in the last two years has been amazing. Yeah, 100%. Shane Dawson is just like the, the highest quality for sure on YouTube. Those documentaries he's been making are amazing. The, uh, the conspiracy ones... The one about Jake Paul, like it's just it's just good content. And like, he's an OG. Yeah, and he's an OG YouTuber, right? So, I would give Shane Dawson a higher ranking again if he posted more content. I'm gonna say he's an A tier, 100%. But I would I would max him on an S tier because he's just such a good YouTuber. Like those videos, those documentaries he makes are just so well done, yeah. entertaining. I love them. There's there's I wish he I wish he was able to post more content. You know. But Definitely. I just, I don't even have anything to say. I just, I agree. Yeah, 100% A tier. All right, so last, let's talk about PewDiePie. Oh, um, can't, can't forget about him. Yeah, PewDiePie is definitely, in my eyes, I've said this to people on my stream, and I say this all the time when people ask me who my favorite, one of my favorite YouTubers is. PewDiePie's up there. PewDiePie's definitely my, my favorite YouTuber. His content is just so raw. I love it. I, I love the way that he's on top of YouTube, the most subscribed channel. And he doesn't give a fuck. Like, he just posts pon content about, like, anything. You know, like, you obviously have heard about the controversy. He even called, he caused the ad apocalypse, which made me lose my partnership with YouTube and have to get it back. But that being said, I don't even care. His content is just so good. The way he'll literally just rip someone apart, he'll speak his mind, and, like, he's just so funny about it, the way he does it. And he's consistent, you know? He has changed, right? Like, the Pootie Pie I started watching was uh, a goofy, like, guy who just, like, didn't take anything serious where now he kind of like takes things serious and rips people apart and i like that about him and he's been at that same level for a while so i'm gonna say pootie pie uh, without a question is s tier there's no there's no uh denying that i think uh i can agree with the s i wouldn't put him in an s i'd say he's he's somewhere between a and s but 
I'll, I'll accept it because he gives you content constantly and there are days where I could just watch it over and like constantly like, put it on a like from one video to the next that I haven't seen yet uh, the thing is though I wouldn't give it super amount of quality but I like how he changed like I never liked PewDiePie before at all but his new format that he has that he's been going with for like a year or two now is I'm all about it just like Shane Dawson I'm on board with it. I like it. I like how it's really ruthless and he's calling people out all the time. And it's funny. It's He reviews memes. Everyone loves the memes. You know, we do it for the memes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, I, I think you kind of got to, he has to be somewhere in the A and the S. Just also what he means to YouTube. Like even after all the shit that he did that was dumb, he's still, he's the biggest YouTuber, period. I don't count T-Series at all because they're a company they're like a record label they don't even count as uh they're like vivo how you can't count that yeah 100%. And, and he's about to pass 100 million he's yeah. at like 98 million yeah that being said i think uh there's like this this is it right now in s tier we have uh good mythical morning pootie pie in a tier we have i dub shane dawson h3h3 in b in b tier we have uh mr beast uh angry video game nerd and john tron in C tier, we have um, Filthy Frank, Jack Black, and Max Mofo. And D tier, we have uh, Casey Neistat. E tier, we have Philip DeFranco. And F tier, we have Jake Paul. That's our rankings right now for the best YouTubers. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think um, with our list. And also, if you guys had to make a tier list with your favorite YouTubers, where would you guys put them? Like All of them are worth checking out except... F class. Yeah, hundred percent. All these guys are worth checking Just, out. Uh, you might like anything from these people. Like I can still watch. I, any I, honestly, in my opinion, I would say C tier and up is worth checking out. I would still watch D and E. I still do sometimes, but it's just they're not my go to. Yeah. But I hundred percent, Jake Paul should be erased from YouTube and from everyone's existence. Like, yeah, I would say just, anyone in here. I, I wouldn't recommend watching Jake Paul. Philip DeFranco or Casey Neistat. They're just it's not content. Well, it I'd be like, you guys you need like. to watch this. But everyone else, like. I, everyone else, I would recommend watching. So, but anyway, guys, we're just gonna leave that there. Uh, I'm gonna put my brother's Instagram link in the description if you guys want to check out his uh, Instagram. He, he does movie reviews and stuff like that. So, but anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.